Now let's kind of bring this together and go ahead and create the conceptual massing diagram that I wanted us to create. First thing we're going to do, so from the create panel, I'm going to give myself a couple levels at 20 feet spacing. All right, now on level one, we're going to come back to create again. And I'm just going to begin to sketch on that level one floor plan here. We're going to use a couple other shapes, so I'm going to use my circle over here. And then I'm going to give myself one other volume out here. Now let's go back to our 3D view for extruding these forms. This form we're going to select and we're coming back up here to create form, a solid form. Remember we're extruding this until we see the level selected that we want to associate it with so this will be all the way up to our top level 5. Same here we're going to select this line work, create a solid form out of it. We'll bring this one just up to level two. And then we're going to select our circle, create form one more time. And we're going to bring that up to that level three there we go. So the last thing I just want us to do now is early on when we're maybe trying to just create a diagram that expresses what each one of these forms may represent as far as the program of our building we can use the paint materials that we just created um, in this conceptual mass environment to allow us to be able to quickly create a diagram that we can show in a 3D axonometric view as you're seeing here. So Let's just go ahead and associate each one of these. And I want to show you each way that we, we can do that. So I'm going to tab through this first form, select it. And now that I'm focusing on my properties menu. If you look over here, you'll see material by category. The first way we can just select right here. And you'll see these paint options come up. I'll assign this a blue paint. And we'll click OK for that one. Now you'll see that form takes that effect right here in the shaded view. The next one, let's go ahead and click on our circle here. The next way that we can go about it is using a material parameter. Material parameters we've explored in another video, so I'm not going to elaborate much further on that, but we'll access that right here outside of the by category field. And I'll just select on that and I can add a parameter here and this can just be you know maybe this is the social program of our building we can group it under something other than materials if we wanted to but we'll leave it there and I'm going to click OK and then we'll make sure that we come up to our family types menu and we can change it here and so we'll use a green paint to represent our social spaces and I'll click apply and you'll see that one take effect as well so those are the two ways that we can go about applying it the other way that I would like to very quickly show you is if we actually just come up here now and we'll click on paint right here in our modify panel if I click on paint you'll now see these end document materials as well so I'm just going to click on my red and you'll see it allows me to go by surface so I can just select the front surface if I wanted to for example the top the sides and I can just rotate myself around this kind of doing the individual faces and I'll click done with that when I'm done. 
The last thing we want to do is just take one more look. I'm seeing that the last rectangular volume that we applied our paint to isn't showing in red. So I just want to come back up to manage, select on materials, and let's select this red this red paint. And let's bring back up this material editor. Okay, right here in shading you can see that although we have use rendered appearance check, the RGB is still set to a black. And I actually want to come back down and I'm going to take another look at that wall paint one more time. Let's find that red here on the list. And that was a matted. We'll use that here. We'll click OK. We're going to come back to graphics one more time. Make sure use rendered appearances still checked. And hit done here. Click apply and now you see that change took effect. The last thing I do want to show you very quickly is it, since we talked about using this as a diagram and these represent spatial volumes you may want to be able to play around with a few other toggles that I just want to show you very quickly. So if I just click on my visual styles here and bring up graphic options, I'm actually able to create some volumes with some transparency here. Now it's going to get rid of the shadow because we can't use both effects at one time. However, I can play with the transparency of my volumes and begin to see inside of them, how they interact, you know, where the spaces begin to overlap. And it can be quite a powerful tool, I think, as you begin to maybe consider using this conceptual massing environment prior to starting your construction documents and your design development phases here in Revit. I think that Revit has quite a bit to offer us. If you have found the demonstration here today on the Smarter Architect YouTube channel to be helpful for you, please subscribe. It takes a second and I would greatly appreciate it.